thanks for having me. Thanks, Zach, for inviting me over. Um, yeah, this is predominantly going to be a developer crowd, right? And you must be wondering, who's this woman? Why is she talking to us about design language systems? So let's get that out of the way. I'm uh, Shweta Suresh. I'm a product designer at NGP Van. At NGP Van, we provide tech support to a bunch of democratic campaigns and non-progress, uh, sorry, progressive campaigns and nonprofits. Uh, before this, I was a UX architect, and before that, a UX designer, and before that, an architect. So I literally went from designing physical spaces to digital spaces. So um, about why am I talking to you about uh, design language systems? FYI, I'm going to be referring to design language systems as DLS here on forth. Um, one is for us to be effective at our job. Next is to increase collaboration and create an inclusive environment. Uh, and also enable teams to work towards a common goal, which is your product, right? So um, the agenda for today is first we'll define what a DLS is and how can we get our employer buy-in? How are we going to convince our employer that, hey, this is really important? And also we'll look at benefits of uh, DLS and how to build a DLS by ourselves, right? So first, uh, defining design language systems. It's a set of rules uh, and, or guidelines that heightens the level of harmony in the digital ecosystem. And when I say digital ecosystem, what exactly do I mean? It's basically interdependent groups of people, uh, enterprises, and teams who share a standardized digital platform and are mutually benefited by it, right? Now that we've understood what, or at least hope, understood what a design language system is. Uh, let's see how we can get our employer to buy into it, right? So let's look at this. So we have a team which has worked for a really long time to build a wholesome product, right? But now what happens if the product is complex? It needs more work, it needs more people into it, not just the initial team that started with the idea. So you hire a few people. And obviously they come with their own brain and come with new ideas, new patterns are added, new styles are added. And this happens with a new set of hires after a while. And after a while, another set of hires, and it's the same problem, right? So now which, was, which once could have been a wholesome product is now fragmented, it's broken, it's inconsistent, and you know, that's not good for the business, not good for the user, not good for the brand either. And that's where DLS comes in. If you have a DLS in place right from the, like in every uh, phase of product development, that is from discovery through ideation and uh, design and development and validation, you can avoid this problem. You can avoid a problem of, of your product being fragmented and inconsistent. And another way that you can look at employer buy-in is numbers. What better than numbers, right? So if you, in your company, if you have about, if, if your designers are going to be spending about 30 minutes a day, with any of these questions, right? What shade of blue are we going to be using? Can we redesign this? Or this asset is too heavy. The developers are asking me for something that's lighter. And where can I find my assets? Or how much padding have I given for this button? You know, things like that. If that's the case, then let's look at if you have 20 designers in your team, and each designer is going to be paid for paid $50 an hour uh, per hour. So that's 20 designers for two and a half weeks, I mean, two and a half hours per week, over 52 weeks, being paid $50 per hour. That's around $130,000, which you can save if you have a design language systems in place, because that's going, uh, a DLS is going to be taking all those decisions for you. A designer is not going to be wasting time, you know, it's these small questions every day. Similarly, for a developer, if, is, if a developer is going to be spending 30 minutes a day thinking of all of these things, can you rebuild this? It doesn't match the design, or what's the, where's the latest documentation, or where are our uh, different components? Does this meet the code standards, and so on and so forth? A very similar calculation, $75 per hour, you have 50 developers in your company, that's 50 developers spending 2.5 hours per week through 52 weeks, uh, being paid $75 per hour, that's $487,500 per year that you can save if you have a DLS in place, right? Now, um, looking at benefits, what, what are the different benefits that a design language system uh, brings along? It's to the users, of course, 
and then the brand, and then you have the business, right? So benefits to the brand. First is recognizability. Can you guys tell me where this GIF is from? Yeah, that's, that's recognizability right there. You look at a like button, even not in the context of Facebook, like in a third party widget, you still know that it, it is from Facebook. It, it, I think from its inception in Feb 2009 is when it, I think it, was, uh, it came about, and you know that this like is from Facebook. When you see you like, share, and comment, usually that's the first place that you think of, right? Recognizability also adds in a lot of learnability. Like you, I mean, sorry, it's the other way around. Learnability adds recognizability. The more you learn something, the more you can recognize it even, even if it is not used in context, right? Another benefit is consistency. Atlation. Atlation has Confluence, Jira, Bitbucket, what, HipChat? I think HipChat is gonna be shut down from Feb anyways. But uh, you can see how consistent the logos are. And if, you, if you're using it on a day-to-day basis, you know that the interaction is quite consistent. You go from Confluence to Jira, I don't think it's, once you've figured out how to use Jira, you can rule the world, <laughs> right? So I think that's consistency right there. And also consistency leads to learnability. And once you've got your user to the stage of learnability, you're essentially banking on the fact that you have now converted a user's cognitive skill into his into his intuitive skill, and I think that's success right there. The moment you know that the user is now, uh, can use his intuitive skills over his cognitive skills, that's really good. And authenticity. Where is that from? Yeah, now that's very authentic to Medium, right? It, it essentially does the same thing a like button does. But it, it shows appreciation, it shows acceptance, but then the clap is very authentic to Medium alone. I don't, I mean, at least I don't think this, it's something like this has been used before. So DLS adds to authenticity as well. Next is benefits to the user. When a, when a product is consistent and, you, uh, uh, and it's intuitive for a user to use, it's, it, it reflects on the usability of the product itself. And this is a no-brainer. Usability improves enjoyability of the user, so I don't think I have to talk much about this. Next is benefits to the business, right? It improves efficiency and cost. So a DLS allows everyone in the ecosystem to create, recreate, iterate, and modify, right? And you can do this how many uh, times you want as long as you're using a DLS, then you're always aligning yourself to what the product is moving towards, right? And uh, this level of efficiency can be uh, achieved by using a DLS. And, um, <clears throat> Example I can give you is uh, from Airbnb. So this is a direct quote from uh, their design lead. Um, they want, uh, we wanted our designs to be unified to drive greater efficiency through well-defined, reusable, cross-platform components, right? So that's efficiency and cost. Next is stability and flexibility. So it, DLS creates a very interesting cult culture of stability and flexibility, although there's evolution, right? It's, 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 it's almost ironic that it's something is evolving and still creating stability. Next is uh, innovation. So now that your, your designers, developers, and everyone else in the company are not spending time on small design decisions, which DLS has now taken for you, so they have more time and resources to be spending on innovative thinking. They can expand their opportunities and bank on them, capitalize them, whatever. So now that you've got your employer buy-in, you've completely understood what the benefits are, what next? What can you be doing in your company is get everyone ready and on the same page, collaborate at healthy, agree to collaborate at healthy intervals, right? You need to get everyone together, talk to them that, hey, this is what we're gonna be doing, and this is not like a one-stop process, like it doesn't start today and end tomorrow, it's gonna to go on forever, and we need to like get on board with it, talk about it every now, now and then. And also keep in mind that this is a collective desire to improve your user's uh, experience, but also improving your in, uh, internal efficiency. So um, now to actually get to building a DLS, what I suggest is a system block, right? So what system blocks is would essentially act as your building blocks so that you can use it in any which way to build your design language system. 
So they're foundational building blocks that you can start, that you can use to start building your design language system, right? And I'm gonna be talking to you about just five very basic system blocks, but then I encourage everyone to build their own system blocks that suits your company and your processes, rather than you, you know, following a generic one, which is not so good. First system block is tools. So before I get to that, I just wanna tell you that this might sound extremely silly, these five system blocks, but I feel like if you nail this, you're, you're gonna save a lot of time that you'll otherwise be usually wasting. So uh, when I say tools, I mean everything. Everything that you use for internal communication, internal documentation, anything to share between designers, developers, marketing, content, blah, blah, blah. This is just like a few bunch of tools. So you can see this internal communication, documentation, sketch for designers, uh, Google, GitHub for developers, Envision for prototyping, and so on and so forth. You can add to that list, right? Next is folder system. How silly is that? Folder system being a, a system block is just, but then how many of you suffer with finding a single file? So you'd rather create your own, right? Instead of spending time and looking for one, you'd rather create your own, the, which creates, again, a copy of the same thing and you don't know which one to find and then finally you have like a million buttons and you don't know what to use, right? So folder system is very important and then folder system has naming conventions as well. You wanna decide how you wanna be naming your different things at different levels. At folder level, naming yes. And after that you also be need to be looking at asset level, like what, are, how are you going to be naming them? Or in the developer, development world, packages, framework, blah, blah, whatever, right? And then documentation. Every decision that you make, you document. From, uh, create, create a one-stop shop for every information related to the system. So when you're onboarding a new person, although he comes with his ideas, they are now going to be ta tailored to what your product direction is, right? Next is style guide. So style guide can go two ways. One is if you're building your own product or you already have your ex uh, product is already built and now you wanna implement a design language system, right? So if you have an existing product, the first thing that you should be doing if you're looking at a DLS is a UI audit, right? Look at this. This is from product X and look at the number of buttons, oh my God, right? It's like all over the place. This is a perfect example for a bad, bad UI. So now what these guys have to do, don't ask me what product it is, I don't know, but uh, what they have to do is zero down on four or five buttons max and see different states to it instead of having a million buttons like this. So I think the best way to think about this is you could, you could have like a theme for a day, like Monday is going to be buttons. So everyone across your uh, company are going to be taking screenshots of buttons that they see every, the whole day. That's it. And Tuesday is probably going to be drop downs, or Wednesday is going to be something else. You know, pick each component for a day so that way you're covering all the components and you document them, and you, then you'll see how ridiculous your UI is. And then you can zero down and cut it short. Right? Next is. Oh, th these are just few benefits of having a UI audit. So consistency, documentation, retrofitting, convincing your boss for a uh, common interface language, and it's basically laying groundwork for your DLS. Then uh, the next thing about style guides is toolbox. And I know we did talk about toolbox earlier, but in this sense, what, I'm, what I mean is from a designer's world, it's like the plugins that you use or, or the new I don't know, content generators that you use or something. For the developers, I'm not sure you guys figured it out. And um, grid system, that's pretty common, basic for both designers and developers. Pick one design, uh, grid system, but don't obsess over it. Make sure you give yourself enough flexibility just in case you, know, you need to add something else. And then naming conventions. This is the layer of naming convention that I said you need to get into a little more details of how you're gonna name your assets or your frameworks or your packages. Or, things like that. Typography and text, pretty straightforward. Pattern library, when I say pattern library, people usually get confused between style guide and pattern library, they're two completely different things. Pattern library is more specific to layouts and design and designers and developers creating these components in React or blah, blah, blah. But style guide is more generic, it's more uh, broader, it's not just design elements, it's a lot more than that, we can talk about that. That can be another talk by itself, I'm not gonna get into that. Yeah. 
Next, the final system block I would say is personality. And in the beginning when I said build your own system blocks, use the personality system blocks because I think that's very, very important. It adds character and quirks to your product, which makes it recognizable, which uh, it, it kind of projects the perception of the brand that you want it to have. Um, a few things that you can look at when uh, thinking about personality is writing style and color of your text and illustrations and typography. Um, I can run you through a few examples. Um, this, is, this example is from Progress UI. This is a design language system of uh, NGP Van that we use internally. It's open source, so you guys can check it out. Um, this is an example of the writing style. We want our, style, our writing style to be more conversational over authoritative and dominating, right? Um, so it, we would rather say, check your inbox for an email from every action. Every action is another product on the nonprofit side, but that's, that, that's, more, that's how we like our writing style to be over saying that, you know, for verification, verification purposes, an email will be sent to the email address you provided. So that's more, you don't talk like that in daily life, right? This is an example from a Lightning Design System, which is from Salesforce. Uh, you, this, the, these are illustrations that you have in an empty state, right? So the, the point that they're trying to prove here is to have characters in the background over characters in the foreground. This is probably because they want you to concentrate on the text that goes with the empty state design rather than those cute little characters there. And this is an example from Atlassian's uh, design language system. This is, the, this is the style of um, illustrations that they follow through all their uh, products. So they, it's more skeletal or filled, or sometimes both. I guess they did, couldn't make up their mind, so they just have everything. And yeah, as I said before, always make your own system blocks, add personality to it, but still make your own system blocks. It could be, it need not be five, it could be more, it could be just two, or maybe you don't want to work with system blocks and I'd love to know why, because I don't know why you wouldn't. And yeah, that's, that's it for me. You can find me on Twitter, that's my handle. You guys have been incredible, so thank you so much. Yet another solid talk that, again, very important that people don't think about, especially UI engineers, but downplays the difficulty of oh, getting yeah. people to agree. Yeah. But once you do, it just like, it makes things so much easier. Yeah. It's I think an exercise that really helped us is the thing that I told you about, having a theme per, for every day. Yeah. It kind of involves the entire office. So you, you're literally competing. I found more buttons than you did. So it's a nice exercise to have in your office to convince everyone that you need this. And it's also better to have when you put all your buttons together and see how ridiculous number of buttons you have. Yeah, both of us actually laughed at that. So. Yeah, I did, I, I I did talk to someone from Netflix who pointed the same thing out to me, and I'm like, huh, interesting. Yeah, it's like yeah. We've, we've definitely done that. And you yeah. start looking at it, or the, all the colors, yeah. the, the different shades of yeah. gray, and yeah. you're like, really? Do we really need exactly. that many different colors? Yeah. They're, they barely, yeah. there's no difference. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. It's more, it's more of, getting things fast, it's, it's very interesting. This is the same conversation I had with someone from Netflix, so I feel like I'm just using his words here. <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's more of, I'm not able to find this, so I'm just gonna create my own, right? Yep. It's more of that attitude, which is not wrong, but if you have your documentation right, you can find it and you don't have to create one, right? And I also like what you said too, is it was almost like it's a living, breathing thing too. Yeah. Cause it's not like it's not set in stone because yeah. that will never work. Cause right. things are changing. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're constantly having to go back to it and yeah. make sure that it's updated and changing right. it. And then, so if I do come along, I'm not recreating the wheel and, but I'm also not using something that's deprecated exactly. or old. Exactly. So I yeah. thought that it's, was really it's, important. It's, it's very interesting, like I said, it brings about stability, but it's not stable. Does it make sense? Like it's not the same forever, yeah. Yeah. but it still brings stability. So it's very interesting the kind of benefits it has. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it, yeah. it goes- Stable, yeah. stable, not static. Yeah. yeah. Stable, not static, static. I yeah. like that. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. yeah. I love the, the button thing, like I gotta go back to it, because yeah. <laughs> it's so true and it's something we, we don't think about. Uh, yeah. Even, I think we had a debate uh, just the other day. It was like, do you put the cancel button on the left or the right? Yeah. And like, is it consistent throughout your product? Yeah. Is it always I can click left or right? And it's actually really difficult unless you have a design language system. It, yeah. Like, 
it's if you look at it from a user's perspective, if he wants to cancel, he's going to find the cancel button, right? Right. It, 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 it doesn't really matter if you're going to center align it or left align it or right align it, or you don't want to put a cancel button because there's a cross, and everyone who uses a computer, probably everyone who uses Netflix on web, knows that if you click out of the model, it's going to go out, right? So I think these are little decisions uh, we waste time on. Which, if had, uh, if you have a DLS in place, we probably wouldn't be doing it. Oh, that's exactly yeah. it, and it's like having that in place yeah. is the key. Yeah. But also to your start of your talk is the buy-in and the, all yeah. the work that it takes yeah. to get everyone bought in. That's the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, definitely. And you know, having designers and engineers work together to yeah. keep that living and breathing definitely. is super important. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for You're the welcome. wonderful talk, and thank thanks for joining us on stage too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.